Uh, namaste, everyone. My name is Ayush Nanda, and I would like to thank the Waves organization for giving me the opportunity to present my paper, Ancient Vedic and South American Cultures, the Communication Between the Two Civilizations. Ancient and Vedic South American cultures uh, showcase many long-standing traditions, and these traditions have their own uh, cultural significance and have developed over the course of hundreds of years. So historians, scholars, and archaeologists alike who have traveled between India and South America have noted similarities between the two civilizations. However, when looking at this topic, there are some points to consider. First, a vast amount of geographical distance separates India and South America. For instance, India and Colombia are over 11,000 miles apart. Also, any similarities between the two cultures could be a coincidence and the result of simultaneous cultural development, as opposed to resulting from cultural interactions. Since there is a great amount of distance between India and South America, an instrumental force must have facilitated a cultural exchange. Some questions that can be asked about the subject are as follows. What was the nature of this possible channel of communication? If these two cultures were linked in some way, what was the extent of their interconnectedness? And finally, what are some specific areas that these two cultures exhibit similarities in? This presentation will investigate the various similarities that I found between the two cultures. I will also explore how the interactions between these two groups impacted their lifestyles and customs. And finally, using historical and archaeological evidence, this presentation will shed light on the nature of the route of communication between India and South America. So first, I will discuss what I observed with regards to similarities. Then I will set, shed some light on what we already know about the relationship between Indian and uh, Vedic and South American cultures. And then I will also quote what some experts had to say about this topic. And finally, I will come to my overall conclusion about this topic. So the areas that I observe similarities in are language, gods, beliefs, practices and customs, and symbols. Each of these areas relates to an integral part of both civilizations' daily lives. So here are two tables that show some similar words between Sanskrit and South American languages. Some prominent similarities that we can see in the table are between the Sanskrit word Kala and the Nahuatl Kagui, Toya and the word Toya, as well as Yoga and the Mayan word Yoka. Incan civilizational memory speaks of gods called Viracochas that came from foreign lands. These gods are said to have commanded elements and they came from across the ocean in order to civilize the Incas. In Vedic literature, Virochana is the name of a Hindu king who was the son of Prahalada and the father of Mahabali. The Vedas say that Virochana and his son Mahabali left India in order to establish colonies in faraway lands, possibly referring to South America. Vedic and South American cultures worship gods and higher powers of similar nature. The concept of Trimurti, or three main gods, is embodied by Lord Brahma, Lord Vishnu, and Lord Shiva in Hindu culture. This same concept is also found in Mayan culture, with the Mayan Trimurtis being Ho, Huitzilopochtli, and Tlaloc. Lord Yama and the Mayan Yam Simil, the goddess of death, are also similar, as well as Kurma the tortoise and the great turtle located in Guatemala. So here is an image comparing Lord Yama and Yama Samil. And finally, here's an image of the great turtle, which is located in Guatemala. Some other depictions of gods that uh, resemble uh, those of the Hindu culture are the statue of the Mayan monkey god. Some say that this god resembles Hanuman from the Hindu pantheon of gods. And the images on the right depict Hindu and South American representations of Mukalingams. Vedic literature mentions a lot about the concept of the four yugas, 
Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dwapara Yuga, and Kali Yuga. Mayans also have a similar belief. They believe that the universe was created five times and destroyed four times. And both cultures also believe in the concept of rebirth and that death is not an end to one's mm. life. When it comes to medicine, both Vedic and Mayan cultures practice holistic treatment, Ayurveda medicine, and the use of herbs and plants. South American buildings such as Chichen Itza conform to the principles of Vastu Shastra as mentioned in the Hindu Shastras. Hindus also take part in a ritual known as the Charak Puja, done in order to please Lord Shiva and Ma Durga. In this ritual, men often swing from the top of a pole with a rope thrust through their back. Mexican people also practice a similar type of ritual called the ceremony of the voladores, which also involves four men swinging from the top of a pole. Both cultures do this in order to invoke prosperity in their lives. The picture on the left shows a glimpse of the Charak Puja ritual, while the picture on the right shows a snippet of the ceremony of the voladores. Structures of elephants are found in Copan, Honduras, despite the fact that elephants are not native to the South American continent. A fire temple, or Havankund, was sited at El Paraiso, Peru, and is claimed to be very ancient. It is thought to be a place of worship for the Hindu god of fire, Agni. A prominent symbol of India, the lotus appears in the lower room of the Temple of the Tigers in Chichen Itza. And here's an image of the Havankund that was found at El Paraiso. Now that we have examined some of the similarities that I found through my research, we will look at the information that is already known to us. So there are a couple of different routes early humans could have took in order to reach South America. In the Ramayana, Sugriva gives descriptions about the candelabra of the Andes, which uh, belongs to the Andes mountains. I am also aiming to provide a plausible explanation as to how Sugriva could have journeyed to South America. Additionally, there is information about Maya and Mahabali, two figures in Vedic literature. They went to faraway lands, often referred to as Patalalok in Vedic literature. In the Ramayana, Sugriva gave instructions to a search party in order to find Sita Mata. He tells his army about places in Southeast Asia, Australia, and even the Pacific Ocean, leading all the way up to South America. Sugriva talks about a massive geoglyph etched into a mountain in the Andes that is known as the Candelabra of the Andes or the Paracas Candelabra. The following Sanskrit shloka from Kishkindakanda Ramayana describes this geoglyph. Trishi raha kanchanaha ketuhu tala dasya mahatmanaha sthapita parvatasya agre virajati sa vedikaha. Shloka 53 from the previous slide describes a golden pylon, which is essentially a giant jogur. This pylon has three branches and also displays a Vedic hoven shape at the bottom. The following shlokas give us more details about the candelabra of the Andes. Purvasyam dishi nirmanam kritam tatrida sheshvaraihi tata param hema mayaha shri manudaya parvataha so shlokas 54 and 55 tell us that the pylon may have been used as a celestial compass. They also say that since the Andes mountains were considered the easternmost point of the world, the mountain range was known as the land of the rising sun. The Vedas also use the word rakshasas to denote beings that are hostile to society. Sugriva describes such rakshasas, known as mandehas, that dangle from mountain signs and avoid the sun, which are similar to blood-sucking vampire bats. Mm -hmm. However, there are only three species of vampire bat present today, and the blood-sucking variety is only found in South America. So, how did Sugriva get to the Andes? So, carbon dating shows evidence of an old seaport in an Indian town named Pumpuhar. As researchers investigated this port, they found more ports along the coast and underwater. The stones used to construct the furthest port into the sea were dated to about 18,000 BCE. This port also ended up being the oldest. 
The underwater remnants of the oldest port proved that it was a fully functional port with intricate canal systems that connected the coast to inland areas and the capability of accommodating over 70 ships. This port lies submerged at a depth of about 430 feet, which matches how much the sea levels went up over time. The Ramayana is dated to around the 6th to 13th millennium BCE. The jury is still out about this, but the port is evidence that Sugriva and others could have traveled across long distances to reach South America. Hindu Puranas, Mahabharata, and Ramayana all mention a king named Maya. While this name appears in many places, these people named Maya were revered for their skills in astronomy and architecture. The Vedas also mentioned that King Mahabali, Virochana's son, as we discussed earlier, established a kingdom in Patalaloka. This could be referring to South America. While the time period of Maya and Mahabali is hard to ascertain, they are mentioned as reaching faraway lands and jumpstarting the civilizations there. Hence, they very well could have gone to South America. Some of the things that they incorporated in South America were advanced calendar systems and floating cities. However, these advancements are not present in the North American continent to the same extent, which is one of the reasons why this points to increased migration to South America. And now we will look more into detail about this migration. So historians initially assumed that the first inhabitants of the Americas came via the Bering Land Bridge, which connected Asia to North America. Archaeologists later found evidence of human settlement in Monte Verde, Chile, which was settled about 14,500 years ago. This led some historians to believe that the land bridge theory was no longer plausible. The reason for this was because two large ice sheets existed during the 15th millennium BCE, the Laurentide and Cordilleran ice sheets. These sheets covered Canada, Alaska, and most of the northern parts of the United States of America, making North America impassable during that time. Genetic studies also show an admixture of genes from Australia and Southeast Asia to be present in South American populations. However, the important thing to note here is that this admixture of genes is absent in North American populations, which indicates that people must have migrated to South America via the Pacific Ocean. So now that we have looked at what I observed through my research and what is already known, it's time to look at what experts have to say about this topic. So in 1849, the United States charged their affairs to Central America. Ephraim George Squire wrote, a proper examination of these monuments would disclose the fact that these buildings, temples in Palenque, Mexico, correspond with great exactness to those of Hindustan, India. Scholar Miles Poindexter called the Mayan civilization unquestionably Hindu in his two-volume 1930 treatise, the IR Incas. And finally, scholar Ramon Mena believes that the Nahuatl, Zapoteca, and Mayan languages are of Hindu origin. He claims that the tribes who speak these languages speak of India and the Orient. And finally, we come to what I surmise about the relationship between ancient Vedic and South American cultures. So Vedic and South American cultures share a lot of common characteristics ranging from language, gods, beliefs, customs, etc., thus reflecting interconnectedness between the two groups. Genetic studies, historical and archaeological evidence, as well as descriptions given in the Ramayana, are all indicators that ancient Indians must have migrated through the Pacific Ocean in order to reach South America. And finally, it is important to note that my research is only the tip of the iceberg, more investigation needs to be done in order to evaluate the full extent of the connection between India and South America. Here is a QR code that will take you to the current version of my full paper for those who are interested. Namaste, and thank you for listening to my presentation. If you would like to ask any questions or offer any suggestions, please feel free to do so. Ram Ram.